1076, um, the biggest event that happened was a leader dies airless over in Britain, and then the aftermath of that, in which they lost Wessex as well as uh, Ireland and Wales. Their uh, final leader, after it all, ends up being a 339, and uh, my vision's kind of screwed right now. <laughs> which uh, means they're going to actually try to do this diplomatically rather than militarily. That's always painful. Uh, little movements elsewhere. Uh, Hungary fell to the Byzantines and has claim. Uh, there were no Saracens, so the Tuscans were able to get up to some value. They have one more turn that they could arrive. Uh, Poles moved into Saxony again. And the French... The French had some trouble with their uh, tax base and then... Uh, proceeded with their actions against Castile, uh, preparing it for a conversion. Oh. Germans also, of course, I mean, you know, they have so many rich areas that they're taxing a lot. And it's not like they really need to, but money is so useful in the game, you don't want to, you know, make three bucks less a turn or something. Uh, cards are less useful in a lot of ways. So... We'll see what happens. 1081, uh, the Britons have moved in and taken uh, Wales back. They are having to do this militarily. Luckily they have the tactical systems card, which increases their ability. Um, the French did some rolling and it didn't go well. Uh, Byzantines, I believe they conquered something else. Smolensk. And... They did some rolling. They had an epidemic, which further reduced their their economic value. Uh, the Poles, and this is kind of the interesting thing, went in and started trying to convert Saxony. They were taking their time about it. Even with the missionary fervor card, which only means they already had one. They only needed two more successes to convert it. They didn't get it. And Germany said, enough's enough, and marched in and drove them out of Saxony. So Saxony is now pagan again completely. Uh, I don't know what this means in terms of a war situation. Uh, I cannot see the Poles actually trying to launch a war against this pile of money without a significantly better leader. Um, so even though they were attacked first, it could well be that this is just an accepted uh, skirmish or you know, Cold War type situation where Germany says, no, this is stupid. 1086. Um, the Tuscans are now in pretty good shape. They got plus three on both their uh, both their territories, which, you know, is pretty decent. They're able to draw good taxes. It's not a heavy burden to rule something like this. So they can do things. Of course, they can't face their nearest opponents, which are the Byzantines and the Germans. Doing so would probably get them stomped. Um, the French succeeded in uh, converting Champagne back to Catholicism, which was a kind of a thorn in their side, that being one of their home territories. The Britons grabbed Wessex back and uh, actually got their leader downgraded in combat ability. That was the invasion of Ireland that that happened on. And the Poles decided to leave well enough alone and are engaging over in Livonia to try to convert that instead of uh, Saxony. Uh, I think the Byzantines improved their position a little bit economically. 1091, and we had a couple leader dies airless events again. Um, the Britons had one moved their capital to Wessex, lost Scotland, and had to reconquer it. Uh, let's see what else. French got claim to Champagne again, finally. Uh, the Byzantines had one, and they lost some nice chunks. They lost Macedonia, which they regained. They lost uh, Bulgaria. And they lost Verona, which they're probably never going to retake. That's going to end up as part of this uh, Italian kingdom that's forming, just because, you know, it's too hard for them to hold on to things like that. It's questionable how they had it to begin with. For how uh, they just held it for so long, and nobody wants to attack them. 
but it's an expensive thing to try to gain back, and they're having a lot of trouble ruling the size of their kingdom. I mean, if you look at the thing, it stretches from Asia Minor all the way through Russia. Um, and that's, granted, the Russian territories, they probably are going to lose to the Mongols. So that's one of the reasons it's kind of, if they had lost Russian territories, they might not have been as... Uh, heavily gung-ho on gaining them back, but losing uh, those Balkan countries is really painful to them. Uh, we see the Lombards beginning a, uh, an operation to convert Rome, actually. Uh, I think that's about it. 1096, uh, what happened? Uh, everything is blurring together. The uh, not a lot, to tell you the truth. Uh, the Britons conquered the rest of their isle again. Um, the French had trouble ruling. The Germans fortified a lot of their territory uh, to improve the chances of not... to improve their chances of avoiding unrest. Uh, they've just been hitting this too much. The Tuscans are probably the most exciting, having expanded into Verona and actually started the uh, recon well, the conquest of the Roman heretics. Uh, that's about it. 1101 here. Um, things started off with a magnate showing up in Leon, charged down into Portugal and attacked Cordova. The French had to wipe it out. Um, the French went last, but. Uh, we've got a bit of conversion going on in various places. Um, the Lombards continue in Rome. Uh, and we have the English starting to convert Norway. Uh, we had a leader die as Aralus over in Pol Poland. Not Portland. Got a new leader there, a 235, which isn't too hot. Big uh, news there is they lost Volhynia, which may end up being conquered by the Byzantines. Uh, the Byzantines haven't gotten to go since that time. They busily uh, retook Bulgaria and tried to improve things. Money ran out again, and the German pile got leached off of. There's a pretty good amount left at the end of the turn after some of the military operations, but... Uh, that's just a continuing problem. 1106 here. Um, what happened of any real excitement? The biggest thing was the Britons converted uh, the Scandinavian countries through Norway. They're all Catholic now. Um, the Germans took that as a chance to grab both uh, Denmark and Sweden, which is a shame for the Britons because they would have liked more fruits for their labor. Saxony remains uh, the only really pagan area. Uh, Christendom, of course, has been divided. Uh, with the Eastern Orthodox getting a much larger share than they normally would. Uh, the Lombards, or Tuscans, uh, continue their attack on the Roman heretics. It's at the point, because of uh, the lack of pagans around that the Poles are probably going to throw away the missionary fervor card, which will be a big bonus for the people who are looking to convert uh, uh, the heretics. They could really use that. Nobody else is too interested in it, so it's really uh, the Italians and the French who are most interested in it. I guess that's about it. 1111, happy year. Um, okay, so... As usual, not much happened. Um, the British actually had a leader dies airless event and lost Norway, but they went and took it back and got claim to it. Kind of restored order a little bit. The French failed in attempting to convert Castile, expended a decent amount on it. Um, the Lombards not only failed, but got uh, driven out of Rome. So they'd have to start all over if they want to convert that. Uh, Everything else pretty much stayed about as it was. Uh, we got a pretty good leader down in the Byzantines. They had a leader dies airless event as well. And ended up getting uh, a good diplomat who got
got Sicily back through diplomacy, no less, uh, and is working on extending into Georgia. 1016 major events that occurred, uh, hmm, not much as usual. Um, the French attempted to expand, uh, to reattempt their conversion of Castile. They did it from Aquitaine, and they're about halfway there now. The Italians went into Rome and got booted out again. Uh, I love the futility. Um, and the Byzantines, with their powerful diplomat, uh, grabbed some diplomatic ties in Polish territories. Hopes is for a conquest. Chances of the other nations accepting that, though, are pretty low, so I don't know how valuable that really is. Uh, Leadership-wise, the Germans now have a pretty potent leader, but they're not using it. Um, there were some thoughts. They tried to push forward the idea of, hey, why don't we just finish the Byzantines off once and for all? Well, it's not that easy to begin with. Uh, but also, no one else is terribly interested in that uh, offer because clearly the Germans are in the lead, if not the Byzantines. So the idea of getting a lot of people to help them, or at least let them do it, doesn't seem very valuable to anyone else. 1121, the end of a period, and we're finally seeing some sort of action going on. Um, so... What happened? Castile got converted to Catholicism, if that hadn't already happened. Uh, the Italians retook Rome. They now have a much worse leader. Uh, the Byzantines died airless and have a decent administrator in place. Uh, they regained what they lost in Bulgaria, but now they have a gaping hole in Muscovy. There's a possibility if you know, there's more death, more more territories disassociated. That we could see that seventh player come back in the, the east, a new player, I would assume. But, um, and then the final uh, real action, and this is where things got exciting, is the Germans attacked the Britons over in Norway, and then, given that, and they grabbed a claim to it, given that they're going to war with the Britons anyway. They started an invasion of Britain itself in Wessex. They got halfway through it, then their leader died. Um, and they have nowhere near as good a leader now. But, well, they've got all that money. And they're tired of other people leeching it. So they figured they'd wipe the English off the map, take more German areas, have sort of a fallback area uh, if worse comes to worse. Overall, a good move. Um... One thing I want to capture is, not that it's very readable, the points for uh, for conversions at this point. Byzantines are up 30, Poles are up 25, Germans up 5, French up 10, and English up 5. Uh, those are important because they can't be taken away. I mean, you know, most of these countries are going to stay. The other thing is the sort of stasis of the big country situation where Growing at this point for those countries is actually kind of a questionable thing. Now, for the Germans, at least they have something to grow to in the English territories. I'm guessing with this French war bunny here, we're going to see uh, France come in on England's side in this war, try to grab Burgundy and uh, Provence, which isn't that big a deal to Germany. They're willing to, to lose them, I suppose. Uh, it's how much further France will go. I'm not sure what the effect of all that is. We might also see Poland uh, entering into it as they're kind of limited, but they really do want to expand into those eastern territories instead if they have the option.